Hi, I'm Emily Rose. I'm a professional uh, wildlife and pastel pencil artist and I'm here with a mini series um, that's just about helping you getting drawing. So I'm trying to go through all of the little things that you need to think about, especially when you're really trying to improve your drawing skills, such as where you draw, the materials you're drawing with, how you store your work, your reference photos, and so on. If there's something that is missing from this series and there's a question that you'd like answered, please do get in touch and I will try and record a video for you on that subject, providing I know the answers. So this week, we are looking at how to choose your pencils. And this is something I do get asked quite a lot. How do I decide which pencil I'm going to pick, there are a lot of different colours and tones that we can choose from, especially if we're using more than one brand, and invariably I do use more than one brand. I usually use the Faber-Castell as my main brand, I have a full set of those, and then I pick and choose from lots of other brands like Cratacolor, Derwent's and Carbothello's to fill in tonal or colour gaps. Um, and also, because the different pencils feel different. So I quite like the Faber-Castell because it's hard. Carbothello pencils are quite soft. Different subjects require different things. So they're all things that we need to try and think about when it comes to picking a pencil. And you've got hundreds, as I just said, to pick from. So we will in a moment cut and I'll show you how I picked pencils um, for a recent online tutorial of two foxes and how you can use that same principle to pick your pencils. But before we get into that, just some general advice. Um, I'm obviously a wildlife artist and for most British wildlife, generally speaking, the colours are going to be quite harmonious. This really means if we took a colour wheel, the colours are going to be together in a group. They're not going to be opposites, which would be a complementary colour, and meaning that they're as different from each other as possible and therefore they clash and contrast. So generally speaking, if we have a situation where we have got a, a harmonic um, colour spectrum, colour palette, then we're probably going to be using browns, being that it's British wildlife, and then you can get into instead the nuances of a reddish brown or a cooler brown that's more grey um, and build up your palette in that way. That would move into things looking at um, your warm and cool colours in that respect, which I've actually got an ebook on how to use warm and cool colours and that definitely comes into picking your pencils. But if we just have a look at some of these um, paintings behind me, so this is a tutorial that's coming out soon, um, the Kingfisher. You can see that um, he's actually very bright and he's made up of complementary colours. He's got the, um, the turquoise and the gold, basically. And for that, I've worked around each colour on the colour wheel. So if we have orange for the gold, and that is my central colour, then I've got reds for the browns, for the darker areas, I've gone to one side to red, and for the lighter patches, I've gone towards yellow. So if we were to bring up a colour wheel, you'd find that you have orange, and one of the neighbours is red, and one of the neighbours is yellow. So I've gone one way for my darker tones, and I've gone the opposite way for my lighter tones. And that's generally quite a good rule to keep in mind when you're picking your colours. And then likewise, for the turquoise, I've got some um, much more green tones turquoises in there up in the light and then we have turquoise and then I've got into actually bluer tones the opposite side um, as we're coming down into these darker patches that's quite a simple um, way of looking at it and it can really help you pick a variety of colors without having them all pell-mell and not making any sense so try and think one of the neighbors for either the darks and then the other neighbor the other neighbour for the lighter tones and lighter colours and that will really help um, and progress your work. If we're taking something a little bit more complex though, um, where in this, um, this drawing, and this is another online tutorial, I've actually pushed the colours and I've done this purposefully. So imagine that you're editing a photo and I've taken the saturation and I've just increased, increased, increased until we've actually got purples and pinks and oranges and yellows. Um, lots of very saturated colours that aren't really in a horse. However, a horse, um, a bay horse is obviously a brown horse. Brown is a warm colour and um, it would sit around about the, the reds on the colour wheel. So all I've done is taken red and then to one side we've got oranges and yellows and I've put these in the lighter areas and then to the other side we've got violets and um, the violets 
are in these reflections. Those reflections are very cool. These are areas that the light is bouncing off us, whereas these are areas which are lit and are warm, but have also made the shadows in the legs um, quite cool as well. And to get into those darker shadows, and there are some very rich tones in here, which are like a, um, a magenta brown as well. But to get into those, I've gone through pinks. So pink is in the spectrum of red. It's just red with white added. So I've gone from yellow to orange to, to pink, red, and, and then that pink is taking us into mauves and violets. So everything is sort of flowing in and out from each other. And then we've created something that's a bit more interesting and lively than just a brown horse. Obviously that has a lot of artistic license taken with it, um, but its groundings are in a bit of color theory and then choosing my pencils and making sure that they are going to um, transition nicely one to the other. So let's take a bit of a deeper look at how I actually pick a selection of pencils to do a specific drawing now. All right, so let's have a bit of a look at how I picked the colours to do this pair of foxes. So the first thing to think about, and again, I've covered this in a Q&A, it's Q&A session two, but we can go over it again here, is your underpainting. That's going to be the first section of your drawing. So to decide which pencils you need for your under underpainting, you need to look at the reference photo first and have a look which colours you can obviously see on the top. So we have ginger fur for both foxes, which means um, a reddish orange sort of colour is going to be dominant in the finished painting. Now when you do an underpainting, you want to take that colour, reduce the amount of colour in it, which is desaturate it, and also lower the tone so that it's a bit darker. Now the reason of course for this is, and if you think about it, you can work it out, is that the hairs beneath the top layer, beneath that surface layer, they won't get as much light. And because of that, they're gonna be darker. So if you just break things down and think about it logically, you'll realize um, how you can work out which pencils you're gonna need. So for these warm tones, if we're to take those a bit darker, we're gonna to get to browns. So for the underpainting, I was looking for browns that were quite warm because we have this reddish orange hue um, to our foxes. So I used um, predominantly a 283 and a 169 because they are extremely red browns, but they're, they're darker than the top layers of um, pencil that I've put on top. If the fox was more of a um, desaturated brown, um, like a trying to think of something off the top of my head, um, more just like a, a dog um, that is a brown, then I'd probably use a 280 or a 177. And that is, um, as opposed to having a bias to red, it's a more of a neutral brown. It's still quite warm because brown is a warm color, but it's a desaturated version of the brown on top. So to find out which colors you're gonna need for the top layer, let's grab these pencils before they roll off the desk. That is where your palette comes in. So if we were to just identify the, um, the colors in basic terms, we've got orange. Of course, if we're to pick out oranges from our pencil set, you'll see that they're not really appropriate at all. So this is why I don't use the um, bright colors all that often. They're not particularly natural looking. They're very, um, oversaturated, quite chemical looking, and they're great for flowers, but when it comes to particularly British wildlife, you need to desaturate your colours a little bit. You need to take some of that colour out and push it back. And remember, we're still going to end up with something that has got colour in the finished product, but if I were to use these pencils that are particularly bright and oversaturated, the foxes won't look realistic. Of course, if that's not what you're going for, then that's totally fine. But if you want a realistic finish, then we need to look at some other options. So I've used those warm colors for my underpainting. I've gone towards red. So what I'm gonna do, and I have an ebook on this, which I'll link below, I'm gonna use color temperature to help me here. So when I take orange a little bit lighter, we will take it to yellow. So on the um, shadow side, we've got red, and on the highlight side, we've got yellow, and that's because orange sits between red and yellow on the color wheel. So this is just gonna help us get a bit more intensity to our orange without having to resort to these almost neon colors up here. 
So some of the um, natural looking oranges that are in my set would be a 187, there's a 186 as well, which is very similar. And you can see immediately, compared to the oranges above, this looks almost brown by contrast, but we know that it is an orange colour. So because we can tell it's orange, but next to these um, slightly false colours it appears brown, that means it's desaturated and it means it's quite a good bet for one of your wildlife drawings. So I definitely used one of those. And then as I started to get a bit lighter, again you've got the same problem, you've got these bright yellows which are a little bit oversaturated. Perfect for doing something like buttercups or sunflowers, but not so great for the fox. So I looked again for some desaturated yellows. And this is where I love the ochre light from Creta Colour, because if I put it down next to these very bright yellows up there, you can see it's a little bit milky and it's quite a bit softer. And the difference between the um, ochre light and the board isn't as defined as the difference between this really bright neon yellow and the board. So this is much more natural looking. So that's another good bet. And I often use that in my drawings where I've got ginger fur. And then another Creta Colour pencil that I would definitely recommend you getting is the Bista. This is a really fantastic pencil. And if we just put a small swab of that down, you can see that in terms of tone, how light it is, it's very similar actually to this orange here. It's, it's, it is lighter, um, but it's not half as light as this yellow, but it's very desaturated. It's quite brown in color. So this is a really good one to start to take us out of the oranges and towards those more yellow um, colors that we're going to put into the fur for the highlights. So this is me starting to figure out my palette. I'm working around the color um, orange. So this is the 186. So this is a bit lighter than the 187, but compared to these oranges up here, it's still desaturated. So that's another tick for me. That's another really good one that we can use to layer up. So I'm thinking I'm going to use these orange colors in my mid-tones and that will form quite a good base for a lot of the fur work. And then as we get lighter, I can move to the Bista, which isn't directly yellow, it's more of a brown, but it gets a little bit lighter. And it's gonna to start to transition us out of the orange and towards these lighter yellows up here. So for a highlight, it seems appropriate that instead of using white, we can use ivory because ivory is a bit warmer. So it's more similar again to the yellow. So these colours are looking really lovely together. They're very harmonic and they're very natural looking. Another thing to think about when you're choosing your palette is the type of pencil. So I've covered this before, but we know that there are different brands and the different brands behave differently. So the Creta colour is a little bit softer than the Faber Castell. And for the grey fur, for that underpainting, which needs to be darker than the light grey and white we can see on the top, I wanted something that was soft. So the reason for this, I'll just grab my drawing so you can see how I've worked it out. I wanted it to be quite soft because the whole drawing is very delicate and um, it's quite emotional. So I don't want any hard edges. So for that reason, I want it to be easy to blend my underpainting together. And when I get to these bottom edges, I knew I wanted a really soft transition here between the fox and the painting. I'm um, sorry, and the, and the board. So to get that, I immediately started thinking about using the Creta colour instead of the Faber-Castell. I also wanted the greys to be nice and warm because we're working on a warm coloured board. And again, I want to reduce how intense the edge is between the fox and the board. I want the whole thing to be really nice and soft. If I went for cool greys um, as my whole underpainting, it would make the contrast between the foxes and the boards a bit bigger. And I don't want that. So... The option in Faber-Castell would have been for a mid-grey, the 273. So that's a fairly hard pencil. Obviously I can use it lightly, but I know that it won't blend or glaze as well as the, um, the Creta colours. For a warm grey from Creta colour, they do a wonderful green-grey. And this pencil is a little bit softer and easier to use for, for those um, gentle transitions but it's also just a touch warmer as well. It's, it's not a big difference, but it's a minor gain there. 
And as I get lighter, I'm going to use my favourite yellow grey, which is a Creta colour pencil. Faber-Castell doesn't have a grey that's similar to this, so I would have used this anyway. But I know that the, uh, the Creta colour pencils blend together really nicely. So as I get lighter in my underpainting, I know I can achieve a really soft blend by using these two pencils. So that's how I went about deciding my palette for the foxes. I looked at the the general colour of the foxes, which is orange. And then I thought about the underpainting. So I took a little bit of the colour out. So I'm going towards brown. And I also reduced the tone. I made it nice and warm. I made it red. Because if instead we made the underpainting cool, we'd have to go towards yellow. Orange is between red and yellow. And yellow is the cooler option of the two. And yellow is a weak colour. If you think about yellow, it's, it's light and bright. So we know that we can't take it dark very easily. So red was the logical choice there and I used, actually I've got one here, I used the 283 and another pencil, the 169, that you can see how wonderfully warm and red that looks next to these orange colours. So then for the fur, obviously I want to use an orange, so I picked out some that were desaturated and again you can work that out by taking all of your orange colours that you own and doing little swabs. And when you get to a colour that is still orange but appears to be a little bit brown, that's when you've reached colours that are going to work well for a wildlife painting. So for the highlights, instead of going warm, we're going to contrast those shadows a little bit more and take it a little bit cooler and go towards yellow, which, as I've just said, works really well as a light colour. So I found a good transition colour because we never want to make really big jumps. And that was the Bista. And then I found a couple of lighter colours that work well. Now, a little curveball that I threw in, I also used a bit of pink. So against this board, and the reason I used it, this pink is a very natural looking pink. And you can see that tonally, it's similar to the board. So obviously the color is different, but the tone's very similar. So it's still got quite a soft edge. And this just added a little bit more variation into the fur and um, into those highlights. It added a bit more interest and retained some color as well, because pink is a desaturated red. And Yellow is the cool version of orange. By weaving just a little bit of pink into those highlights, it made sure that my um, highlight fur didn't become too obviously yellow. And you can see the finished result. They don't look yellow. So you can use this process to work out which pencils you need for any drawing. Get yourself some scrap paper and do some palettes before you begin and just start to work out how you're gonna get from one to another and then think about the type of pencil that's going to work best. What do you want? Do you need something that can hold a really sharp point for lots of detail work? Or do you want something that's going to have a really smooth transition and make your life a little bit easier with an underpainting? So I hope that's really helped you and that you can take that idea of creating a palette, mixing different colours and different brands forward with you and that it will help you to pick your own palette for your own drawings. If you're still really struggling and you'd like a hand with it, there is a community. We're over on Facebook at the moment. Um, the Facebook group is called Emily Rose Fine Art Drawing Class. And I'm on there once a week to try and answer all of your questions and give you feedback on your work as well. So do ask any questions. Maybe you've got a photo and you're just not quite sure which um, collection of pencils to use. I will try and get back to you as soon as I can. In the meantime, I hope you have a lovely week and happy drawing.